Welcome back to the program and thank you so much for staying with us on this particular episode of Good Morning Kenya. It is Wednesday and today it is the 15th of November 2017, a day after the 14th of November, the day where the whole world is actually usually marking the World Diabetes Day. So today being Wednesday on this particular lifestyle segment of this particular program, we want to talk about nutrition and diabetes. What are some of the foods that we can be able to use to prevent or if you have diabetes, what are some of the things that you need so that you can be able to manage the condition better? We'll be talking about a lot of issues. We'll be talking about how diabetes relates to fats, carbohydrates, vitamins, all those. We will be talking about them right here and options that are healthier that you can be able to, to find uh, locally where you are. And uh, diabetes, how does it relate with sugar? How you can you be able to you know, go about this particular issue? You know, diabetes is one of those conditions that is uh, related highly to having a lot of sugar in your blood stream. So what is the danger of consuming more sugar if you're diabetic? And if you're not consuming sugar, what are options that you can be able to do to be able to, you know, manage your condition better? So we'll be talking more diabetes. We'll be talking more food. It's an episode for the diabetic and the non-diabetic, something that you can be able to learn and take home from this particular episode just to improve your lifestyle, improve your eating habits, add something into your kitchen, remove something from your kitchen. This is actually the show to watch. My name is Safina Cheng and I'm really glad that you could create time to join us for this uh, very important conversation. So follow this conversation on social media at Safina underscore Ching. The hashtag is Good Morning Kenya. So I will be doing all this with a nutrition expert. She's been on the show before, but today we are talking about different issues, diabetes. Coach V, I know that is the name that most people know you for. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Out there, dress to the part. Blue is actually the, the color that is used for this kind of awareness, diabetes awareness. Yes. So I don't know, was it inspired by that or it was a mere coincidence? <laughs> <laughs> a bit of both. It ah, was okay. more like a mere coincidence. Okay. Yeah, so so I, this was actually meant to be. <laughs> yeah, it was meant to be, exactly. <laughs> yeah. So thank you so much for coming and welcome to the studios this morning. Thank you so much for having me. Yes. So yesterday, the 14th of November, that was a very important day when yes. the whole world was marking World Diabetes Day. Kenya joined in that particular uh, marking. Yes. Probably, you know, what, what was your take home? What are some of the key issues? Mm -hmm. that uh, stand out for you as we speak today when it comes to diabetes, issues that you think are still gaps that needs to be filled mm -hmm. in as far as managing and, 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 and fighting this condition is concerned. Um, so first of all, thank you for having me on the mm -hmm. show today. Mm -hmm. um, so as far as diabetes, um, you know, it, it has been found that the rate of diabetes is growing every single day in, in Kenya and in Africa in general. Mm -hmm. And this is... Um, you know, it, it's a problem because uh, at the end of the day, diabetes is not exactly an illness that is uh, easy to manage. And if you look at the kind of foods that we eat, especially being in Kenya, um, it's not really conducive for managing diabetes. Yeah. One of the, the gaps that I have found is um, with a lot of people who are diabetic, the options for them to um, eat, the foods that they can eat are mm -hmm. minimal. And majority of times they are very like boring kind of foods, yeah. you know, they're yeah, boring, true. it's either steamed or it's boiled, you know. Um, there's a misconception about um, the kind of things that are sugar-free sugar, or, sugar -free or mm -hmm. that have sugar. And so it is um, important to create more awareness around what sugar really is in mm -hmm. the first place, which mm -hmm. kind of sugar yeah. that diabetics should not be consuming. And, you know, when we're talking about things like, uh, you know, products that are sugar-free, what does that actually mean? Does yes. it mean that it's actually good for you to, to consume those? Mm -hmm. And um, especially like even with the sweeteners, we have these artificial sweeteners yeah. that we are using now. We allow, we, we tell diabetics, yeah, you can use this if uh, you don't, instead of having sugar. Um, those are actually even more detrimental to health mm -hmm. than um, than we, we currently know. Okay. Yeah. And we'll be talking about all those, uh, you know, issues that you've raised in yes. this particular program. Mm -hmm. And by the way, we are expecting, I said when we were starting the show, that we'll be expecting a diabetic to join us, mm -hmm. Patrick Ekiring. So if a few challenges came up and he couldn't make it in time, but we're expecting him before probably the end of this conversation, he will be here just to help us understand how it is that, uh, you know, somebody can be able to, you know, deal with the diabetes. What are some of the things that he's eating? What are some of the challenges he is facing in terms of deciding what to eat, when to eat, and all that. It's good that we get it from the horse's mouth. Yes. But then continuing this conversation, mm -hmm. um, 
in terms of you know the health or the immune system what would you say are the difference between somebody who is non-diabetic and a diabetic person for mm -hmm. us to understand exactly mm -hmm. what they need mm -hmm. what, what some of the nutrients that they need mm -hmm. so what would you say is the difference between somebody who is non-diabetic mm -hmm. and somebody who is diabetic? diabetic in a nutshell what's diabetes okay yeah. so what <laughs> actually that's a good question so exactly. what is diabetes so if you compare the way that um, a non-diabetic processes food mm -hmm. versus how a diabetic processes food, and you know with diabetes we have two types of diabetes, there's type 1 and there's type 2. Type two. Yeah? Mm -hmm. So type 1 is where um, it's actually called juvenile onset diabetes, which is um, you get when you're a child, mm -hmm. and that is where your, uh, the beta cells, which are the cells that produce insulin, mm -hmm. are actually attacked by your body. So it's actually an autoimmune disorder, okay. which then results in you not producing any insulin. Mm -hmm. yeah? Type this is two, type one. That's type one, okay. yes. Type two diabetes is where your body that can produce insulin sometimes, it, uh, it is producing insulin. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's not, not producing enough insulin or the, um, the function of the insulin is not working as well. Mm -hmm. So what is the function of insulin? If you think of insulin kind of like a key, yeah? Mm -hmm. So you go home, for example, mm -hmm. and you have a key, you put your key in the lock, you open the door, and you can enter the house, right? right? Okay. But, so that's what um, insulin is. Mm -hmm. It goes into your muscle cells and unlocks the muscle cells so yeah. you can absorb the glucose from the food that you have consumed, okay. yeah? Okay. So that's where now the, the breakdown is with diabetics. Mm -hmm. With normal um, non-diabetic people, then this works. So you're able to absorb the glucose into your body a lot easier and uh, then you can, your muscles can actually use them. So if you even think about athletes, for example, mm -hmm. just before they go like through a marathon or the, a hike or whatever, they tend to, um, you know, like they, they, put, they take a lot of starches, a lot okay. of carbohydrates. So mm -hmm. at, they can load on the glucose, yeah, so that they can have the glucose go into their, their muscles mm -hmm. and they can then if, use if, it. If, if I remember my biology well, mm -hmm. okay, all body cells need energy to yes. function. Yes. And this energy, we get it from glucose. Yes. And uh, glucose is actually coming from, after digestion, the carbs that we consume. Mm -hmm. So insulin, from what you're sharing with me this morning, is actually what helps the body cells to, to absorb, absorb it. Yes. Uh, the, the glucose, which yes. will give them energy. Mm -hmm. So somebody who is diabetic has no or insufficient supply of, of insulin, mm -hmm. so they may lack a way of getting the glucose into the, into the, the, cells. the, the cells. Yes, yeah. So that is the challenge that they have. Yes. All right. So mm -hmm. what is, what is um, you know, that uh, some of the symptoms probably that uh, would act like telltale signs that mm -hmm. somebody is developing or has, or has diabetes. diabetes. Okay, so some of the, made, the, the biggest sign is really that you find um, someone who has diabetes goes to the bathroom a lot, so they urinate a lot. There's mm -hmm. a lot of um, secretion of urine, mm -hmm. right? They mm -hmm. also uh, might have um, a lot of thirst um, at, at a particular time. And then during the peaks and troughs of the sugars, um, especially when you're at a drop, which is called um, hypoglycemia, mm -hmm. you tend to feel like you can almost eat an entire goat. Yeah. Wow. So, you're so like you hungry. feel that you're so hungry, yeah, mm -hmm. and it is consistently, you know, happening, yeah, mm -hmm. and you feel like you need like a lot of sugar. Yeah, you just need like you just have a need for sugar in that mm -hmm, moment. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so those are some of the symptoms that you can identify, if, especially if you're going to the bathroom a lot. And then maybe sometimes even some people mm -hmm. drop their weight like dramatically. You okay. know, like it's a very huge drop in a very short period of time. All right. So those again could be signs of that you have diabetes. Okay. Yeah. So um, you're talking about some some amazing, you know, issues that we're sharing this morning and mm -hmm. symptoms that one can be able to affirm that probably you have diabetes. It would be good to hear it from the horse's mouth. Yes. And the guest has just joined us, Patrick Eckering. We're so happy that he could make it in time. Probably if you can just join us, welcome to the studios. Just walk in set. Uh, feel free to come. Thank you so much for joining us this particular morning. Thank we are you. so happy that we could have you. Hi. We've been really <laughs> waiting for you. <laughs> Sorry, traffic. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, Karibu Sana. Uh, you. V, you can just, yes. just, just give him some space. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. So, we are having this amazing discussion yeah. with uh, V in the morning about diabetes. She's told us what it's all about and the types, yes. type 1, type 2, yeah. and actually some of the symptoms for both. Yeah. general symptoms that are very common okay. uh, for, for, for diabetics. Probably, uh, maybe if I may bring you in, yeah. let's do a bit of a background about you with this condition, diabetes. Yeah. When was it that you discovered you were diabetic? How did it happen? How okay. many years has it been? And yeah. how is Patrick? 
now. Okay, great. Yeah. Uh, thank you for the opportunity. So I discovered I was diabetic um, around um, 13 years ago. Mm -hmm. I was in my mid-20s. I just uh, started my first job. So we had gone for a trip with uh, a couple of colleagues. So we went uh, over Easter, came back to Nairobi, and then I felt sick. Mm -hmm. And uh, normally when you go to hospital and uh, you tell the doctor that you've traveled, the first thing they would want to test is malaria. Yeah. So the first hospital I went to, they checked for malaria. I remember I was put back home on malaria medication. And uh, after a day or two, it did not improve. So they kept on, I kept on um, checking to find out, okay, what's really wrong. So okay. I went to another hospital, then I went finally to a third hospital whereby um, the doctor said that um, they noticed that I was going to the toilet a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, I think I had Virginia say that one of the symptoms is that you get um, the urge to go to urinate yeah, a lot. Yeah. So when the doctor noticed that I was going to the toilet a lot, he recommended that we check my sugars at the time. And uh, I'd lost a lot of weight, about 15 kgs in less than a week. Mm -hmm. And when they checked my sugars, they were so high that he literally did not understand how I was still alive. Yeah. Because... Um, Normal range of sugar is between 3.5 to 7 mm -hmm. when, you're, when it's controlled before you eat or anything. But mm -hmm. in the event that you eat, it can go up to 11, which is 11. normal mm -hmm. in the recommended units. Mm -hmm. But at the time, I never got to know how high it was. Mm -hmm. I only remember after I was uh, diagnosed with insulin, a day or so after, my insulin had come down to about 21. Mm -hmm. So it was really, really high. Okay. So I was uh, diagnosed uh, and uh, put in um, insulin and of course under observation for about a week mm -hmm. in hospital, mm -hmm. which was at the time I was very young. We didn't have any history of diabetes in our family. Mm -hmm. So it was very shocking. Yeah, <laughs> for, family history yeah. has also been known to be yes. probably one, one of the risk factors. Yes, mm -hmm. um, what they say nowadays is that because of change of lifestyle, and uh, what we eat and sedentary lifestyle and, you know, sometimes because of work schedules, people don't work out and whatnot. Mm -hmm. uh, it could be sporadic, what we call sporadic in the sense that um, maybe my grandfather had it, but because he was living a healthier lifestyle, the symptoms didn't really show. Okay. So what happens is that based on the lifestyle and the, uh, today's lifestyle, chances are that the symptoms might catch up with you and sometimes it tends to miss one one, one generation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So this was 13 years ago. Yes, when I was 20. Did you, did, you, did you have information about diabetes before or you just learned about it after you, had, you were diagnosed? I, I, of course, uh, in our education system, there is a bit of information about various diseases. Yeah. But if you are not uh, more or less really, really interested in something, mm -hmm. you'll just have a little bit of information to know that, just yes. Just the surface. The you surface just information, the surface, yeah. But then you don't yeah. Really, yeah. So I didn't really have the information. It was very shocking. Mm -hmm. And the moment you're told by the doctor and the nurse that you actually type 1 diabetes mm -hmm. and you need to be on insulin and you have to inject this insulin every day. Every day. An average of two to three times a day. Wow, you're talking about injection. Injection, yes. To and, the apple. The <laughs> and then it has yeah. to be three times a day. Depending on it, could be two or three times okay. a day, depending okay. on uh, what levels of sugar you are. Yeah. But for me, I remember initially it was twice a day, but after more visits to the doctor, looking at how my sugars were behaving, mm -hmm. I now started taking insulin thrice a day. Okay. Yeah. So the body needs insulin. We, we already talked about yeah. why. Okay. So that is why diabetics have to always have that constant supply of insulin. Yes. All yes. right, so um, we'll come back to you, but then yeah. uh, Virginia, he has talked about the lifestyle that we live, you mm -hmm. know. What is that lifestyle? What are some of the things that we do today that are really, really dangerous and probably could be risk factors mm -hmm. that are causing you know, this increased ballooning numbers of uh, diabetics and some even don't know that they have diabetes till yes. date. There's a large population of people that are diabetic and they don't even know they that they are. They don't even know it, yeah. yes. Um, so some of the things that we are doing, like he had mentioned, is having a sedentary lifestyle, which means that we are not moving very much. Mm -hmm. So we have jobs that have us in front of a computer at a desk for seven hours in a day, and then we don't take the time out. You know, we always say, oh, I don't have time to work out, you know. Mm -hmm. But yeah, not having time to work out could result in you having something like this, either diabetes or it could be any other kind of lifestyle disease. Mm -hmm. 
Um, another thing that we are doing, our diets, we have moved a lot away from uh, a plant-based diet. So we're not eating very many fruits and vegetables anymore. We are having more um, starches, more, and very simple starches as well. So things like white rice and, and breads. And, you know, there are some people who actually, especially bachelors, survive on bread and tea, mm, you know? Mm. So... <laughs> For so breakfast, dinner, lunch, and, and breakfast, dinner. lunch, and dinner. <laughs> Any meal is, you know, bread and tea. Mm -hmm. So those kind of things that we are eating are not really helping us. On top of that, as we have seen the uh, middle class growing, it means now we have more disposable incomes, which then is resulting in us taking on more Western lifestyles. Mm -hmm. And as we're taking on the Western lifestyles, we are basically going into, you know, um, more fast food, more of the processed foods. Look at the foods that you get at the supermarkets. Mm -hmm. You know, you have so much stuff that is processed, things in cans, in yeah. bottles, mm -hmm. in packets you know and we have taken that more as food than you know simple things that you can get from yeah. the market mm -hmm. you know so that's another thing that is really causing this to happen mm -hmm. on top of that our sugar intake has skyrocketed it's mm -hmm. gone off the the charts yeah everything has sugar everything nowadays. has sugar mm -hmm. even those processed foods majority of them have sugar in them if it's not uh, sugar in its you know in a simple form it is some form of sugar mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. so that's another reason so you're seeing a lot of a lot of people are gaining a lot of weight as well um, we have uh, many nations of obesity mm -hmm. um, like let's say in, you know in South Africa there's about 50 percent of South Africans are mm -hmm. obese mm -hmm. in Kenya we're not that far off yeah. and majority of the you know people who are obese are mostly women mm -hmm. you know Mm -hmm. uh, either obese or overweight and that has an impact on our health generally yeah. mm -hmm. you know so if it's diabetes if it's going to be you no know, hypertension cancers all that it's now exacerbated it's made even more because of having um, overweight or obesity mm -hmm. yeah Patrick probably out of all that she has shared yep. what are some of the things that you used to do then and then how have you had to transform your life okay. what are some of the things that you're doing now that yep after going through what, what you're going through, yeah. you decided these are the decisions I made to live a healthier life. Okay, just like she said, um, basically our food choices and what is available, really available in the supermarkets, when you're invited to your friends or when you go for a gathering for family, mm -hmm. most of the food choices are, so to speak, high in sugar. Mm -hmm. And um, when, when you don't, when I don't, when, when, when I wouldn't take a conscious decision of whether this has high sugar or not, then chances are that my sugars would be going higher most of the time. Mm -hmm. So you'll find that um, in the morning you'll take uh, bread with uh, tea, which is milk tea, with three cups of sugar, and then maybe, spoons. yeah, three, sorry, sorry, three spoons of sugar. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of sugar. Who three cups of sugar. <laughs> <laughs> sugar. Sorry, hey, sorry, yeah. Too much. <laughs> three spoons of sugar. Exactly. Uh, I remember when I was in um, high school, there was this thing would put uh, cocoa, sugar, and then make a concoction with it. And there was and a name for it. Yeah, CP. Yeah. <laughs> Cold power. <laughs> so, yeah, it, you know, the sugar, you know, yeah. uh, it's like at some point, uh -huh. I believe that we, so to speak, get addicted to sugar from the time we're kids, uh -huh. but we don't even realize because our body doesn't necessarily need that much sugar in the uh -huh. system. Uh -huh. So, um, eating the white chapatis, the white rice, uh, processed foods the chips, uh, you know, all these um, restaurants that are coming up, you mm -hmm. know, that'll be a regular thing because when I was in campus, I remember going to eat that Kenchik, mm -hmm. sorry to say, <laughs> with a lot of processed fats. Those uh -huh. are one of the things that mm -hmm. really, really would make my sugars go up. Okay. Uh, but then, um, um, of course, after learning that and then now realizing that I have to really change my diet and look at conscious food choices, then at first of all, it's a bit challenging because you'll find that uh, you have to necessarily you have to make a conscious effort because these foods are not readily available if you really think about it when you go for the parties. Mm -hmm. But when you, you look at, okay, fine, this is my condition, this is what I need to do, then in the morning you'll say, okay, fine, let me take something either which, will, which has high fiber, which are things like oats mm -hmm. or Weetabix, mm -hmm. and then maybe in between, because now I'm on insulin, I'll take a break, uh, which will have maybe something like a banana, which is a snack so that I avoid the hypo that might come in between mm -hmm. because there's also what you're watching. You're watching the hyperglycemic, which I had Virginia mention earlier, yeah. which is what will really cause the internal harm, which you're not aware of. Okay. Because all the organs in the body, you'd find that they could be affected by your sugars when they're high. Mm -hmm. But then as a contraindication of taking insulin, there are times when your sugars become low, mm -hmm. which is meaning that your body really needs uh, maybe a snack or something sweet to eat. Mm -hmm. So um, when I go out, I'll make sure that I either have something that is 
good for me in terms of high vegetables, mm -hmm. you know, the spinaches, uh, salads, fresh salads are very good, uh, something with a bit of tomatoes and whatnot. And then also foods that are high in um, legumes, like beans, especially what we call jahe, mm -hmm. <laughs> is very good in controlling because mm -hmm. most of the foods actually that are high in fiber and you can still get a lot of proteins in them, mm -hmm. a lot of vitamin D and magnesium, which are also good in controlling the sugars. Mm -hmm. uh, you'll find that they are good for your for, 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 for diabetic. Okay. There's a lot of uh, brown rice nowadays, mm -hmm. I mean available options like brown rice and brown chapatis. A few restaurants nowadays you can find that at least yeah. they'll ask you if you want a chapati, do you want a brown one? Yeah. So people are starting to become conscious. Yeah, people are becoming aware. Yeah, people, aware that yeah, yeah, yeah. There's, there's, there's the healthier option and there's one which you know will make your sugars go up easily. Okay. Yeah. Good that we, more, some things you've mentioned we have them on set this mm -hmm. morning yeah. and uh, Virginia will take us through you know, some of them just to get us to understand what options, the ones you're talking about, are yeah. there yeah. Uh, that people can be able to explore. Whether you're diabetic or non-diabetic, this is actually the way to go, going back to nature and trying mm. different natural products. But then uh, before we begin, she said something about people think yeah. a diabetic diet is so boring, there's nothing interesting. Did you find that challenge when you had to you know, well, I think um, how you live. Um, 13 years ago, <laughs> <laughs> maybe I was not aware, but I, I guess also there has been a little bit of advancement okay. and awareness in terms okay. of health options. Okay. But then it was really, uh, I remember my food had to be made separately and then food for the rest had to be made separately. separately. Mm -hmm. So sometimes you feel like you're also being, you know, okay. yes, I learned. Right. But I mean, with um, more of awareness and uh, more of interest, because you also have to take interest and see and find out what is available. What can you the, add? The, what can you the add to make your food make more interesting? interesting. Wow. It doesn't have to be the normal, boring brown food. Okay. You have different <laughs> options that you can actually look at. And I never used to eat avocado. I used mm -hmm. to think it's a boring fruit. But nowadays, I find it very interesting. Mm. In fact, I can hardly pass a day without eating avocado. So mm -hmm. um, the more vegetables, the more fruits, uh, but you can play around with them, then your food can really become interesting and colorful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, And they can be interesting as long as you understand the value, the nutrients that yeah. it has and how it's going to help your body. Yeah. So that is what we want to do now, Virginia. You mm -hmm. have a lot, mm -hmm. you know, that we have displayed here. Yes. And we have grains. I wish we had something to boil the grains <laughs> and eat them. But then... <laughs> That's why I had a jiko right we, here. Yeah, so that we can boil them and eat them right here. But then yeah. that would mean we have the show tomorrow then. Right. But then take us through what we have here. Okay. Like, what are some of the things that we ought to understand feel free to pick any as you help us understand why we need it mm -hmm. how it would help a diabetic how you know what frequency w whichever way you choose to go about it i can okay. see already green grams yes right next to me <laughs> yeah so fun. so yeah. there's, there's mm -hmm. a lot of different options that diabetics can have yeah. um especially around like he was talking about the brown rice and mm -hmm. you know um your your brown chapatis and things like that yeah what is really recommended is that with um, diabetics, you look for food that has a low glycemic load. Mm -hmm. I'll explain what yeah, that break is. Down. Yeah, break <laughs> down. I'll explain what that is, yeah. yeah. So there's glycemic index and there's glycemic load. Mm -hmm. Those are two different things. Glycemic index is the one that shows you basically a measure of how the carbohydrates are converted into sugar, how quickly they are converted okay. into glucose. Mm -hmm. Now, glycemic load, is it shows you now how much carbohydrates actually exist within a particular ingredient. Okay. Yeah? So it's possible to have um, a, a fruit or, an, or a vegetable that has a high glycemic index, which means that it, has, it converts into sugar really quickly, mm -hmm. or, but it has a very low glycemic load. Okay. An example of this could be something like watermelon. So okay. watermelon converts into glucose very quickly, very quickly. but it has very low carbohydrate mm -hmm. content. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Another thing could be like carrot. Mm -hmm. Carrot has a high glycemic index, but it has a low um, glycemic load. Mm -hmm. Now you want to be looking at those things that have a low glycemic load, but then also be, be conscious, you know, like I'm an advocate for juicing. Yeah. If you are a diabetic and you're juicing certain fruits and vegetables, you know you're having everything in higher concentration. Yeah. So even the sugars come in higher concentration. Okay. When you're juicing, like even Patrick will tell you, he did like uh, 30 days of juicing yeah. last year. Mm -hmm. And um, y with the sweeteners, you want to 
limit the number of fruits that you have in, in a diabetics uh, juice. Mm -hmm. um, you want to do more vegetables and maybe with the fruits you do maybe like maybe half a, an apple, a green apple, mm -hmm. not even a red apple because green apples have less sugar okay, than, than red apples. Red. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so let's talk about, we talk about juicing. Yes. Uh, we did that. The we've talked about that. We, we're yeah, going we'll on talk to about it today. If we get so time. what happens after juicing? Yes, yes. yes. So some of the things that I have here is like brown rice. Mm -hmm. I hear a lot of people really do not like brown rice. They don't like the texture of the brown rice because they're so used to having the fluffiness and the softness of white of rice, white yes. Rice. Mm -hmm. But white rice is actually high, um, high GI, high GL, mm -hmm. yeah, which means that it's actually really terrible for you to be eating if you have diabetes. Mm -hmm. Um, brown rice can be made in a way that can still be interesting. You can put things like cumin seed in there, mm -hmm. which will make it interesting. You can mm -hmm. have cloves, you know, put some spices in there, mm -hmm. make it interesting. And, you know, even like we have our pilau and jerry, you know, put mm -hmm. your pilau, <laughs> make your pilau and jerry, but you use it to make pilau and jerry out of this. Out of brown rice, rice, yeah, and it uh -huh. will still be really delicious, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. um, other things that we have here are like Patrick had mentioned, then jahe. jahe. This, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Beans are, and, and legumes are really, really good for um, diabetics, for humans basically yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. one because um, they have high protein they all have about 14 grams of protein per hundred grams mm -hmm. which means that you're getting like the recommended um, daily um, you know requirement of of uh, protein mm -hmm. on top of that if you can avoid having um, carbs as a as a diabetic mm -hmm. When you have things like beans, they already have carbs in them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so okay. beans are not just protein. They have carbohydrates, carbohydrates as, well. as well. But it is carbohydrates that are um, complex. So mm -hmm. it's co complex carbohydrates, which means that they are broken down a lot slower mm -hmm. into glucose, mm -hmm. which then means that you don't get that peak in, um, in your glucose levels in, the, in your sugar, mm -hmm. and then you can slowly now, you know, your insulin can slowly help the body to absorb what is available, you okay. know, in the glucose. Mm -hmm. So yes, I have another type of bean here. Um, you can also have, you know, even kidney beans mm -hmm. are all really good for you. They um, all serve the same purpose? Pretty much, yeah, okay. they all serve the same purpose. Mm -hmm. They have the proteins, they have the, the carbohydrates, they have vitamins, they have all sorts of stuff, yeah? Mm -hmm. So they're really good source of, of food. I have here some sweet potatoes or guache, yeah. as we know them. <laughs> um, <laughs> Which many people are shying away from nowadays. Yes, I yes. wonder why. Exactly. We're all taking and these, bread and, yeah. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And these yeah. are actually a much, much healthier option yeah. than taking your white bread. Actually, yeah. even taking wholemeal bread, you know, it could be more uh, beneficial mm. to have mm -hmm. this than to have wholemeal bread. Why? Because wholemeal bread, for them to be able to um, to keep the the um, the bread bound, mm -hmm. it still needs white flour. Yeah. yeah so okay. you're still getting the wheat flour in your in your bread, regardless. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then on top of that, we don't really know how people are making the wheat bread. Yeah. Because you don't know what the ingredients are, yeah? So, um, Plus there's a lot of preservatives that we There's a lot of preservatives, today. exactly. Mm -hmm. and, um, and the ingredients as well could have a lot of sugar. So this is natural sugars, complex sugars exist in this, and even in arrowroots, in doma, yeah? Mm -hmm. So yeah. that uh, is also a really good option for breakfast. I know we are mm -hmm. all going, no, but now we are too rich for this, yeah. you know? We yeah, <laughs> but people think it's, it's like it's, for, it's, for, it's for poor Ushago, people. Yeah, for mm -hmm. Ushago yeah. and things like yeah. that. No, that's but that's why my producer Ben is actually on my neck right now. He's a big fan of Ngoashe. Yeah. And he's saying, <laughs> <laughs> I wish we had a Jiko here to boil. <laughs> yeah. But then this is healthier. It has natural sugars, something yes. that we can really implement. Yes. Avocado. Yes. And talk avocado. to us about fruits as well. Yes. Yeah. So avocado, again, really, really important when it comes to um, managing diabetes. Like Patrick had said to you, actually, I'm the one who introduced avocados to Patrick. Because mm -hmm. I said to him, you know, you don't even you've not really had an avocado until you've had an avocado and enjoyed it you know yeah. um they you can even ask him what effect he, he feels mm -hmm. he's actually told me before like what do you feel when you have an avocado um actually it's one of the fruits that um when i actually take because when you get used to knowing when your sugars are going up mm -hmm. when you take an avocado oh so you can actually know yeah, yeah. yeah. you yeah. can know. feel it well there's a feeling what we normally call pins and needles mm -hmm. Like you feel like your your body is feeling like itchy in a mm -hmm. certain way, but it's from inside. Okay. So, so when you're used to knowing when your sugars are going up, mm -hmm. then that's the feeling you get, and sometimes it can get very uncomfortable. Okay. But the most important thing to note is that it's not just your sugars are going high; it's the internal harm that could be happening, because what happens is that <clears throat> every other organ in your body is being either affected or impacted in a certain way. Because mm -hmm. what your body now does at that point in time is that it tries to convert the excess sugar in your blood into urine. Mm -hmm. 
So that means that some cells are being converted into water and you lose a lot of water at the same time. Okay. Anyway, besides that, for avocados, when you actually take avocados, the high fiber in it makes, um, what happens in the body is that it makes it the process of conversion of the excess glucose in the system, mm -hmm. I mean, of, of the excess carbohydrates into glucose slows down. Okay. So at least it acts maybe like a sponge or what we call high fiber, like a sponge. If water was going through somewhere, it takes a slower process than, you know, the, sugar, the foods yeah. that we eat and they okay. go, your sugars okay. go up immediately. Okay. Mm -hmm. So it acts like a, something that slows down that process and you can actually feel more relaxed after eating avocados okay. or any food that's normally high in fiber. High but fiber. avocados is one that I highly, highly recommend. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> he has actually explained it very easily. It's yes. like a sponge. Yeah. Yes. So yeah. It's, it slows down you yes. Know, yes. how glucose gets yeah. into your, your bloodstream. Yes. Yes. Wow. yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, so what else? Those, those are the, you know, the more common things. Actually, another thing that is really good for diabetics is things like onions <coughs> and garlic, which garlic are really good, good. For, yeah. for diabetics as well. Mm -hmm. If you can eat this raw, it's even more beneficial. Yes, oh I my. know. A lot of people come to you. Yeah, talk of garlic. Or, or what you could do, you could garlic. have, like you could you have just dawa, mm -hmm. dawa like uh, yes. garlic, lemon, and ginger. Okay. With yes. hot, yeah, hot lemon water. <laughs> it yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 So you could do that, or you could just, if you can handle the flavor, or actually, it's an acquired taste. I, there was a time I could not handle eating garlic on its own. Mm -hmm. Now when I have my, uh, my food, whatever food it is, I can just chop a, a bit of, of garlic, chop it into really fine bits, or even you can, you can mash it with a, a brick, uh, what is it called? Mortar and pestle. Mortar mort and pestle, yeah, that's oh, it. No. So, <laughs> <laughs> the mortar and pestle, and make it into more of a paste, and then you just mix it into your food. It mm -hmm. actually doesn't taste that bad. Mm -hmm. You know, once you have gotten used to the idea, I, I think a lot of people are even concerned about the breath after you have yeah, taken garlic. But would you rather have the garlic breath or be sick? You know, mm. choose. Breath you can manage. You can, breath you, you can, can manage, you know. So you cook, you, can cook, you cook with it? Or yes, you can also cook with it, but when you have it in its raw form, it has it's more, it's nutrients more nutrients because you, you don't yeah. burn out a lot of the, the ah, okay. um, whatever, the nutrients. I think the most common people cook, cook yes. you know, with it. Yes, yes, okay. yes. Okay. But to even get that garlic flavor, because you know cooking also takes away the garlic flavor. Okay. To be able to get the garlic flavor, you probably have to use the entire thing to be okay. able to actually get it. And you need to cook it like in a very specific way that will make sure that the, the garlic doesn't cook enough before you put everything else okay. in. Yeah. Okay. Um, so you talked about onion. Yes. This is very basic in our kitchen. Yeah. yeah. Tell, talk to us about it. Like yeah. what are some of the, you know, values that it carries yeah mm -hmm. so with onion another thing is okay so onions do more of um they they act like a buffer you know like the way he was saying you know with the avocado it acts like a sponge mm -hmm. so um, onions do something similar to that mm -hmm. and they also help in the circulation you know another that's one of the issues that actually um, diabetics have is circulation of blood through their bodies mm -hmm. especially to the feet and this is why you find that a lot of um, people who have diabetes will uh, end up forming ulcers in their feet okay. and sometimes even get gangrene which results in mm, amputation of legs okay. yeah? yeah so it actually helps in that circulation of the blood through the whole body mm -hmm. and you can even tell like sometimes I, I usually see Patrick doing this because you know like there's sensitive you know like what, what he's saying the pins and needles mm -hmm. it helps in clearing that up as well and okay. if you have it in its raw form again the even better. better yes so it's just not for making food taste better no it's it not just for it actually has values. beneficial yes okay <laughs> yes. so there's a, a bit of some uh, you know Moringa, or was yes, it, yes, 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 that, yes. that we have here. Yeah. Probably talk to us about those as well okay. for us to understand. Okay. Yeah. So before we even go into that, I just want to touch on really quickly on some things that are probably not as common in our kitchens. Mm -hmm. Yeah. One of the things is something like this. I, I know you probably don't have no clue what this is. Mm, yeah. This is like pearl. Wheat, but then it is pearl barley. Yeah, wow. <laughs> which is very high in chromium. Mm -hmm. This is one thing that is really important for diabetics. Yeah. Chromium is, is what actually works with insulin to be able to um, now, you know, absorb the glucose um, um, easier. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So pearl barley, fantastic for that. It also has magnesium and uh, manganese, which is actually also beneficial for people who have diabetes. Mm -hmm. So and maybe you could just you mention it? in what form it can be taken. Yeah. Maybe yes, as that's a natural... why I was asking, do you boil it or what? Or you make it like yeah. rice. 
Oh, you okay. make it like rice okay. or you can boil it even further and make more of a porridge yeah. kind of thing yeah. from it. Yeah. Ah, so you can okay. boil it even longer and it becomes a bit more porridgey. Yeah. Okay. So you can Do you add anything sweeteners or you just take it like that? You probably not sweeteners as a diabetic, mm -hmm. but um, maybe you can put some spices, you yeah. can put okay. some cinnamon. cinnamon. Okay. You know, cinnamon is good. Actually, cinnamon has a bit of sweetness in it already. Mm -hmm. So you can put some cinnamon in that uh, if you're making it more of like a porridge or if you're making it more like a rice, you can use things like cumin seed. You can put some herbs in it as well so mm -hmm. you can have parsley coriander you know we all like our dania mm -hmm. so you can put things like that in it as well mm -hmm. yeah. pal bali pal bali okay yes mm -hmm. wow. another thing that we probably don't see very often in our kitchens is quinoa mm -hmm. yeah so mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> i was waiting for someone to mention it but uh, obviously quinoa. not so quinoa is another another option <laughs> <laughs> um, that is really good for, I mean, you can have it as a, an alternative to rice. Okay. The beauty of quinoa is that, first of all, it has less carbohydrates. <laughs> and then on top of that, it has a lot of protein in it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So mm -hmm. quinoa is actually uh, a plant that is in the amaranth um, kind of plants. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's actually a cereal, a, a side, uh, it's called a pseudo cereal because it's mm -hmm. not an exact cereal. It's not exactly a, a grass. Yeah. So you use it, um, you mostly use the seeds. So these are the seeds that you get from the um, from the quinoa plant mm -hmm. and you boil them it, you don't boil it as much as you do with rice, with rice mm -hmm. it cooks very quickly okay. so it's a it's an option that you can use um, as an alternative to rice or you can even use it as a starter you know you can make like a salad out of it mm -hmm. and it is really nutritious and really healthy for anyone mm -hmm. let alone diabetics uh, even non-diabetics <coughs> even non -diabetics. Like how many minutes does it take to prepare it about five 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 minutes yes so why people still use pasta and, and, and all that Yes, mm -hmm. because exactly. Because it's all about saving time. So yeah. we have healthier options that you can actually prepare exactly. and save time. Yeah. Yes, yeah. yes. Wow. Another one is couscous. Couscous, um, couscous. usually Interesting takes... Interesting name. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> couscous takes about... Actually, you don't even need to cook it. You can just put boiling water in it mm -hmm. and leave it to sit until it absorbs all the water. Once it has absorbed the water, you just mix it around with a fork. You can put some onions in it, some garlic. Again, the mm -hmm. same thing. You can use it as a, as a replacement for, um, for rice. rice. Mm -hmm. They are not the cheaper option, I will say. Mm -hmm. um, especially like quinoa can be a bit expensive. It's about 187 shillings to 100 grams. Okay. So it can be a little bit more expensive. But then again, would you rather pay for um, the quinoa or pay for your medical bills? You know, it's, the, it's really, it really depends on health what, by choice, you know, health by choice, yeah. <laughs> and then um, another thing that is useful is um, sunflower seeds and yeah. pumpkin seeds wow. as well. Wow. Um, that's really good for, um, for diabetics. I actually do a lot of cooking classes mm -hmm. to demonstrate how you can use these things in a very interesting mm -hmm. and delicious way. Yeah, okay. so you don't end up with boiled food. Yeah. yeah. So those are the kind of options that you can have. Again, pumpkin seeds also very high in zinc, mm -hmm. which is something that diabetics um, also, some, need. also need. Mm -hmm. Yes, so magnesium, potassium, uh, manganese, and zinc, mm -hmm. and especially chromium. Okay. Chromium is really, really important for them. Now, you were mentioning the um, moringa. Yeah. Patrick was introduced to moringa last year. Or um, did you know about it before? I well, knew about it before, He knew about but it, but I... did not actually take it. Yeah, okay. <laughs> so tell us, Patrick, about the, the experience. Like, yeah, of moringa. Okay. Yeah. Um, just, uh, you see, like, the way I was explaining about... Um, the avocado. Mm -hmm. So moringa, first of all, the taste is not nice. So anyone mm -hmm. looking for a nice taste, you're not <laughs> gonna find it in moringa. <clears throat> Though when I started taking it and I found that it actually helps reduce my sugar levels. Mm -hmm. In fact, I was able to reduce my intake of insulin by taking healthier foods and especially moringa. Mm -hmm. You can mix it with honey, with the lemon, with you know whatever it is that you'll mm -hmm. find more. As you continue, yeah. one thing that has come out I'd wish to highlight, yeah. your intake of insulin actually depends yeah. on the level of glucose in your blood. Mm -hmm. so yes. There is no, like, a specific, you know, No, it depends amount. on the level of glucose in your blood mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. the level at which your body is producing insulin. Okay. So for some so type 1, yeah, okay. for some type 1 diabetics, uh, they have a little bit of insulin produced. Okay. But there are some who do not have completely. completely. And also, depending on a lot of factors, which is like your physical activities, mm -hmm. whether you exercise in the morning and whatnot, that will all change whatever levels of insulin you will take. Mm -hmm. So sometimes you can find that it actually calls for you to test your sugars regularly, mm -hmm. so that by the time you go to see your doctor, because you have to keep on going for 
medical supervision. Mm -hmm. You can know at what level <coughs> you need to take your insulin. Okay. Or at mm -hmm. what times you need to take your insulin, yeah. Okay. So it varies. It's not uh, standard, constant. but yes. Yeah, it's not and it constant, depends but from one person to Yes, to yes, it mm. depends from one person Moringa, to Moringa, you were talking to us about <laughs> that. Yeah, so, so back to Moringa. I, yeah. I had actually taken it previously, uh, but um, I remember my dad used to tell me these are bitter herbs from Ushago. Mm. So I never knew what it was. <laughs> yeah. But when I actually found that it's actually called Moringa through through V over here, then I realized I actually used to take it, but not really consciously. I'll take it some days, sometimes I don't take. But when I really got that, it actually has a huge impact on my level of insulin intake. And it reduces my sugars drastically. I started taking it like religiously. Mm -hmm. Every evening especially, because it also calms your body. It calms your cells. If when you're really um, keen in sensing what is happening in your body, mm -hmm. and especially when you're diabetic, because you can feel when your sugars are up, when your sugars tend to start relaxing after a glass or two of Moringa, mm -hmm. you actually know something is working. Okay. And you can sleep easier. So it's you know. drastic. You just feel mm -hmm. the impact. It's very drastic. Yes, yes. Okay. Not necessarily, but you know, with time you'll start, you know, noticing mm -hmm. that. Feeling yeah, a difference. Yeah, feeling a difference. Okay. This and also cinnamon tea. Yes, yeah, when you, when you take cinnamon. Yes. Oh, yeah. okay. there's, there's, yeah. an, there's cinnamon here as well. So yeah. you can make your cinnamon tea with actual cinnamon. So you can either use this or you can use the cinnamon sticks. And you, you just boil, you boil water, add this. If you, if you can, you can add a bit of honey as well. But mm -hmm. um, for most diabetics, again, you can't really put too many sweeteners because this already has um, a bit of sweetening, sweetening in it. Mm -hmm. um, you can also use other sweeteners other than honey. There's uh, things like maple syrup, which is also um, plant-based. You can use things like um, dates, are also good sweeteners, but then obviously you know dates can be very sweet. Mm -hmm. So sweet. again, you do that in moderation. Everything okay. has to be done in moderation, especially when it comes to things that are sugary. Yeah, yeah. Um, you can even use nectars like coconut nectar and you know all sorts of nectars. Yeah, mm -hmm. so there's a lot of different options that are not <coughs> as detrimental to, especially diabetics, than sugar. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so there's you know there are some of them are a little bit more expensive. Things like stevia as well. If you can get used to the flavor of stevia, because mm -hmm. stevia has like a, a, a bit of an herbal taste mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. um, if you can get used to it then it's even a better option as a sweetener and you use very little like you literally okay. put like a, a pinch of it in whatever it is that you're taking, that you're taking. and it's like the effect is so huge in comparison okay yeah. so it doesn't mean that you if you're diabetic you're not you cannot use sweeteners mm. but you have there are certain types yes there are certain types types yes. that you can use yes so it's and not about just taking Yes, like yeah. I, I was saying um, earlier on, there's, there's the sweet now, you, you, what do you call it, Candarella? Candarella. Candarella, that mm. one, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't even use that stuff, because yeah. that stuff is like poison. Um, so <laughs> <laughs> you know, a lot of diabetics are told to use that as a sweetener. Okay. I would say, please stay away from that stuff, because it's like a molecule away from chlorine. Yeah. Okay. So you do not take, don't take those candarel things, though. You know those kind of sweeteners, because they are actually more detrimental to even a, a normal person, mm -hmm. let alone a diabetic. A normal person will suffer a lot from, you know, it, continuous use of those kind of sweeteners. Mm -hmm. And you'll find that even with the these drinks that we say are um, sugar-free. Mm -hmm. Yes, they're sugar-free because they don't have sucrose or fructose, mm -hmm. but they have that stuff. Okay. That's what they are using as the okay. sweeteners. Yeah, and there are a lot of those on the shelves. There's a lot of them. Okay. Yeah, so those are the kind of things. Again, other things that you also need to get away from are these low-fat um, products yeah. that you get. Yeah, so if they have taken out the fat which actually fat makes things taste good, mm -hmm. they have to make something else make it taste good. Yeah. Yeah? So majority of these things have added sugar. Mm -hmm. you know? So yes, you're having low fat, but it has more sugar, which means that if you're trying to lose weight, you are doing nothing, because mm -hmm. sugar is actually the biggest driver of obesity and overweightness. Mm -hmm. yeah. OK, there's something you wanted to add, uh, Patrick? Uh, I think in terms of the seeds that you had mentioned, okay. flax seeds are also quite a good yes. source okay. for, yeah. for the for diabetics, which okay. you can mix with your normal um, um, when you're having maybe your yogurt, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, you can mix with it because okay. they're very small seeds, just like well, one of the ones she's shown us over here. Yes, yeah. 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 Okay. yeah, flax seeds are also really good for um, omega-3. They are yeah. plant-based for omega-3 fatty acids, okay. and they have their own really good oils. Mm -hmm. You know, like we also look at, like Patrick was saying, um, those um, 
um, hydrogenated fats, you know, the ones that we use for making chips, mm -hmm. the ones that you get in the supermarket yeah. shelf, the yellow ones. <laughs> Those okay, ones. Look at how you're describing them. It's like they're so poisonous. The yellow ones. Yeah, because, you know, especially when you're cooking chips, we overuse those oils, okay. you know, so you, you, you can find someone is cooking chips in those oils for like five times. Mm -hmm. By the first time, you need to pour it out mm -hmm. because it's literally become poison, you know, because it breaks down the chemical composition of the oil when you yeah. heat it up. Okay. So the moment that happens, then you can't use that oil anymore. But you'll find even people will go and scoop they out of that and use it black. to parties, yeah. and they'll go and they use, use it until and it's turn black. It black yeah. Exactly. Yeah. That's so, when you, you, you pour it away. Yes. So, so before we get to the fats and <coughs> yes. the oils, mm -hmm. yeah. let's talk about vitamins. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Um, you know, vitamins, what are some of the options that are there for, for people who are mm -hmm. diabetic? Mm -hmm. What are some of the foods mm -hmm. that they can be able to use to, to supply that? Okay. Mm -hmm. So with diabetics, again, you need to have um, vit the normal vitamins. So yeah. you need your B, B vitamins all the way from B1 to B12, okay. like any other human being mm -hmm. does. Um, and it's also B, B vitamins are good for energy. Yeah. So they give you more energy in your, in your body. Um, you also need vitamin C. Um, in vitamin C, you can get from, um, you know, your, your fruits. Yeah, you can get it, like, from oranges. Mm -hmm. But then again, you know, like with diabetics, again, everything in moderation. Listen to your body. You know, depending on what's going on in your body, like Patrick was saying, it's not a one-size-fits-all okay. with diabetes. Okay. You know, you, you listen more to your body and figure out what works, what doesn't work, what will peak your, your sugars um, instantly and what doesn't. You just kind of listen to, your, to mm -hmm. what's going well, on. I'm coming back to you. Uh, mm -hmm. Patrick, yep. is there something, like, a diabetic diet that works for everybody equally you know something that is is there people people really mis misunderstand that that issue okay when you when you go to a nutritionist you'll find that they'll give you various options okay so like what via said it's not one size fits all okay. however just based on the foods that we have mentioned most of if you look at you know what you'd try and uh, compose of your normal day-to-day -day intake mm -hmm. would compose of you know 80% vegetable, more or less. Mm -hmm. Fine. Whilst you can have salmon and the tunas, which mm -hmm. are which are which are um, fish that have good um, omega-3 again, which is good for diabetics and have all those minerals. Mm -hmm. uh, it's it's not easy to say there's one size fits all. There is no, yeah, there is yeah. no diet like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, every, but every but again, if you look at what we have said in terms of um, uh, if you eat your rice person and you eat your your brown rice, uh, you can alternate with your chapati mm -hmm. and whatnot. You can more or less come to a maybe ninety percent mm -hmm. fits all, but I can't say like this one it size fits work. all. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. It's, as long as it's high fiber, mm -hmm. high fiber is, is the key thing for anyone, including diabetics. Okay. Yes. Um, so yes, we were looking at the vitamins. Yeah. So the supplements, mm -hmm. basically. Um, another thing that um, uh, diabetics need is, like I said, chromium. Chromium is really um, important. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You can get that in the form of a capsule as yeah. well, and it mm -hmm. can come in like maybe multi multi minerals. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, like this is, so this particular capsule is a mineral, it's a complex mineral, I mean it has like, not a complex mineral, <laughs> multi-mineral uh, multi um, capsule, yeah? Okay. So you have chromium in here, you have magnesium, you have um, selenium, you have, you know, uh, manganese, you have mm -hmm. all sorts of things in this one capsule. Mm -hmm. And the beauty of using supplements is that you get things in higher concentration. Mm -hmm. You know, things like even turmeric, you can get turmeric, this is turmeric here, mm -hmm. you can get um, turmeric in the form of a capsule, okay. which means that it has, it's even more concentrated. Concentrate. Okay. Yeah. And that is good for diabetics, it's also yeah. good for um, cancer, it's good for hypertension, mm -hmm. also, mm -hmm. let's just say turmeric, if you can take turmeric every single day, which is what I do, um, it's, an anti, it's the best anti-inflammatory yeah. um, food that you can ever mm -hmm. have, you know, mm -hmm. and a lot of illnesses are being caused by inflammation, inflammation. of the body, mm -hmm. yeah, internal okay. inflammation, okay. so that's a really good way of um, neutralizing that from happening. Mm -hmm. um, so the, the yellow... Um, supplement this is mm -hmm. the b vitamins i don't so it's like a, yellow a mega, tablets it actually also changes the color of your urine uh, so. it becomes yellow it becomes but yellowish it's not bitter, but it's not whenever i see a no, yellow no, no, tablet no, no, no. it's so bitter <laughs> like no, malaria no. drugs <laughs> Yeah? No, it's not bitter. It actually okay. has no flavor, really. Okay. Mm. And just make sure that you're drinking a lot of water yeah, while you're doing this, while you're taking um, um, supplements. Mm. Actually, while you're taking anything, drink lots of water. On a, as a rule of thumb, drink at least two liters of water yeah. per day. Mm -hmm. But um, 
that's again dependent on the kind of body you have, especially your weight, yeah? So there's actually calculators online that you can check on how to calculate how much water you should be drinking per day based on your body weight. Mm -hmm. So say for example, there's one where you just divide it by 30. Yeah, so you take your body weight, divide by 30, and that gives you how much water you should be drinking. So mm -hmm. for example, if you're 60 kilos, you divide that by 30, that's two liters mm -hmm. of water. Mm -hmm. And then on top of that, if you're very active, like you um, have exercise yeah. or you walk around a lot for Every activity, every half hour of activity, you need to add 500 mLs of water because mm -hmm. you're does, losing a lot of water. On that, that note, way. does yeah. does the, the diabetes limit your level of activity, like the things you can do? An instance, for example, for example, if you you're an athlete, yeah. can you still do it? Yeah. Well, um, it, it depends on what level of um, activity that it is that you're doing. But mm -hmm. actually, when you're actually diabetic, that's when you actually really I recommend it to exercise oh, okay. mm -hmm. because part of um, the the Part of what your cells go through in terms of whether it's especially type 2 is that your cells go through a, a phase whereby they <clears throat> are not willing to recept the insulin quite easily. Mm -hmm. Now, what I found out is that when you actually exercise and do physical activity, it's like it jump starts, you know, it mm -hmm. keeps them active. When okay. your cells are active, then they are more easily, they're more able to recept the insulin more easily. Okay. Yeah. Okay. In terms of how much activity you can do, I believe that there would be a certain recommendation depending on what your doctor advises, okay. but I, I have not come across, uh, none of my doctors have ever told me, no, no, but limit you, your activity. But you're saying it's recommended that you become more active? Yes, yes. it's actually, yeah. actually more, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Even the, the, it's actually mm -hmm. been, been found that um, exercise is almost the same as a shot of insulin. So you actually yeah. have like something, um, yeah. like the same kind of reaction. The body has the same kind yeah. of reaction okay. when you exercise. Okay. So actually, sometimes, cold. just sorry to add on to that, sometimes when your insulin is actually high and, and you don't necessarily want to rely on the insulin, I mean, sorry, when your sugars are high, I keep confusing the two, and you don't want to rely on the insulin, one of the things that's recommended is that you can do high, high active exercise and mm -hmm. your sugars will calm down. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. The good thing about this is that it teaches you, as much as it's a challenge, yeah. it teaches you to be a doctor, <laughs> yeah. a nutritionist, <laughs> yeah. a fitness yeah. expert, yeah. and you just all, all in one yeah. for all you to be able think, to know how to manage I think when, some, when people get ill, they even become better doctors for themselves than, the than doctors. doctors themselves, you know, yeah. because they are really going through a lot yeah. of a lot of challenges mm -hmm. and they have to look at how they can get around those challenges. Mm -hmm. yeah. Wow. Mm. Yeah. Unfortunately, we've come to the end of our conversation oh. <laughs> that quickly, yeah. yeah. But we've really learned a lot, and you've, you've really opened our eyes as to some of the foods that we need to add mm -hmm. uh, on our meal plans, whether you're diabetic or non-diabetic. So your final words, let me start with uh, you, Virginia. Okay. Just generally the conversation we've had and, yeah. and what you'd advise, mm -hmm. you know, our viewer this morning. Okay. Mm -hmm. So my, my biggest um, uh, advice is stay away from sugar. Stay mm -hmm. away from processed foods, stay away from fast foods. They're the things that are leading people in this direction of getting diabetes. Mm -hmm. um, also, get your checks, your, your medical checks done um, on, a, on an annual basis. Make sure that you are, um, you know, eating the right things, doing the, the moving more, because again, let's not be uh, as sedentary as we are. Try and do at least 30 minutes of exercise mm -hmm. per day. Mm -hmm. Incorporate things that you, I mean, don't use old, um, you know, old ideas or old knowledge to deal with what you're, what you're having. You know, like with diabetes, um, if, you, if you know that in the past you could take milk, but now someone has said, actually, it has been found that milk is not good for you, then try and adapt these new things. Mm -hmm. Have more of an open mind um, around what, what is available and the knowledge that is available. Okay. Yeah. Thank you so mm -hmm. much. Thanks. Patrick? Um, uh, just like any other condition or disease, it's not, it's not death. I've been with uh, diabetes for 13 years, mm -hmm. and sometimes I also I, I thank God that it occurred to me because maybe right now I'll be living very carelessly mm -hmm. in terms of the food choices and what I'll do. Um, the prevalence has increased throughout the world and in Kenya, so I would recommend that people do more tests. Uh, any day there's a diabetes open day, any time you feel that you're going to the toilet a little bit more, or even in your annual regular uh, test, just make sure you incorporate a sugar test because sometimes it takes quite long for people to okay. discover they're diabetic okay. and by the time they discover they could be already an organ or something that has been hampered. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, just like Virginia said, uh, nutrition and diet are your two most important things. Okay. If you're type 1, yes, incorporate your insulin, make sure you take it regularly, but at the same time, take a lot of fluids and make sure you incorporate exercise. Mm -hmm.
Yes. Okay. Thank you so much. Yeah. And this is a conversation that <laughs> can never be completed. You know, <laughs> yes. we can always go on and on. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, we really appreciate the little that we you've been able to help us understand this sure. journey. Thank and you. it's something that you can carry on. This conversation continues on social media. Plus, it continues where you are. Why don't you try out something new that you've never done before, whether you're diabetic or non-diabetic. If you're non-diabetic, you may not understand until it happens to you. So why don't you prevent it from happening? And if you know someone who has diabetes, this is actually some information that you can share and help them, you know, through it. Thank you so much for watching. There's more coming your way right here on Good Morning Kenya. Don't go anywhere. It's Wednesday. And after this, we talk matters politics. So we come back after the break for that and much, much more. My name is Safina Ching. Stay with us.